Hey everyone, I'm Matt Pinfield. Welcome to Storytelling with Blue October. Now music is the most powerful medium there is. It's certainly the thing that gets us through our days, through all the good things that happen in our lives, and the things that are difficult as well. The artists that we love, that mean the most to us, are the ones that really connect to our hearts. And spiritually, what they do with their music. Those are the things that really get us through every day. Now, I discovered this band back in about 2004, 2005, when I saw them in a showcase in New York City, in the back of a little club. And immediately I was taken by their lead singer. Uh, Justin first and felt blew me away. I could see the passion, and I knew we were kindred spirits from that moment on. So I followed the band and finally met and hung out with Justin at Lollapalooza in 2007. And we've been friends ever since. So for the last 14 years, we've been on an incredible ride. And he's given us some incredible music in that time. This band has created some of the most passionate, real music that you'll find. So I'm really excited to be a part of this tonight and to bring you this incredibly special live stream event. So right now, without any further ado, I'd like to welcome the band. It's Blue October. See you, brother. Great to see you, Justin. Great to see you too. Thank you for having us. Let me just tell you, it's so great to be here with you. It's great, right? This is it's it's incredible. It's been an incredible journey. Yeah. And all these amazing albums that you've uh, that you've given us in this time. I just thought, what a great idea to actually break down these songs and play them in such an intimate way, and then talk about them, where they come from. Uh, you know, you actually gave me the idea a long time ago, so we're actually stealing this from you. When I used to watch you on 120 Minutes when I was a kid, and I thought, man, oh my gosh. And when you would do the interviews with these bands and they would explain their songs, and it, you're, you're a legend in all of our lives. So having you here doing this is, is probably one of the coolest things as a band we've done. So uh, thank you for... Uh, checking off that bucket list. I appreciate it. Oh, it's, it's my honor to be here with yeah. you. So I'm excited about the songs that you're going to do tonight. And we're going to get really deep into where they came from. Yeah. Uh, and, and just the emotion behind them and, and the, everything, the way they were created. So I'm very excited. So we're going to start out uh, with a track. And you're going to tell us a bit about this one. Uh, it's called All That We Are, which is such a great song. All That We Are was written for the I Hope You're Happy album. And... Uh, it's about uh, the lifestyle that you have when you're on the road. And um, I thought of all the people that are away from their families for their jobs, you know, uh, people in the military, uh, people that travel. And it's just about missing your family and uh, the, the bond that you have with your guys when you're out. And, uh, and, and I truly love it because it feels like you're in a tour bus when you listen to it, uh, the pace of it, the drums. It feels like you're in a tour bus, you know, missing home. Yeah. yeah. Well, let's, we want to have you do it right now. All right, cool. All Thank right. you very Thank much, you so buddy. Much, Justin. You got it. Sets and melodies and cold winter storms in my summer fire. But if breathing is harder as we get farther, forecast weather. Take another one For you I'll take 
you sleep I feel you right next to me And the sound of your heart
What an incredible song. I love that track. Thank I you, buddy. From the home album. And I gotta, what an unbelievable anthem of the fight back. I mean, lyrically, it's just incredible. And it's, it Thank builds. You. Let's talk about the documentary. You know, Get Back Up was such a moving documentary. And it go, it's nine years of your life. Let's do, tell me about deciding to do this documentary. And, right. and then literally the time capsule of those nine years. Let's talk about it. Uh, I got sober in 2012, and it took a lot of people that loved me, these guys behind me and my family and my management that loved me, and they showed me a path to the person that they saw inside of me that I was slowly eating away at. And uh, so when I got out of rehab, it was kind of a selfish thing to start out with because I said, put cameras on us. And they're like, why? And I was like, well, I want to make a documentary on what it takes to stay sober in the music business. And, uh, but I secretly wanted to have an insurance policy on not relapsing because I knew if there were cameras on me, I wouldn't go downhill because I would not want any of my supporters to see me fall apart on screen. I have to always win. I'm a very competitive person. So I knew that if I could hold on for a year, then that maybe I could go back to, you know, dabbing a little bit. And, um, but what happened was when the cameras got on us and it filmed us for the first year, we saw all these relationships mending and all of these beautiful things happening. People started having children with their wives. My brother and my, and all of our relationships started getting better and trust was being gained. And I was like, this is beautiful to have this all on camera. Let's keep filming. So the second year happened, the third year happened, then Ryan had twins, let's keep it going. The fourth year happened uh, and it just kept going and going. And then uh, seven years, I said, okay, let's stop, let's stop. And, um, but I think that's what is so special. I got a call the other day from my, my, my head counselor at the rehab and he goes, guess what? We're showing your documentary to people at the, at, at the place that I went. And that right there was everything to me. That beats every, everything in the world, that kids are there, watching that going, that dude came here and he succeeded? Yeah. That's awesome, you know? Yeah, it's a really inspirational story. It's yeah. incredible. And I think for anybody of you not seen it, you definitely have to. And you can, you can watch it right here on getbackup.tv. Yeah. It's a beautiful documentary and it's so emotional. So talk to me about the song and the writing of that song because it just has such an incredible place in the film. Well, the writing of I Want It really came from... When they tell you when you get sober to, to stay on that pink cloud, yeah. you know, stay on that pink cloud. Don't, don't leave before the miracle happens. That's so true. Yeah. That's so true. And this world is full of such drama and such catastrophe and that we're meant to be on this earth to be happy, joyous, and free. That's what we're meant yeah. to be doing on this earth, enjoying ourselves, loving each other, peace. So it came from that. There's been so many enemies in the past, and I found that if I just forgive people, and if, I, if they can forgive me, I can forgive people. So instead of going, you know what, I really, oh, the people that, that are trying to destroy my life, I hate them, I'm, I'm gonna pray for them. And I thought to myself, I remember I was sitting by a pool in Port Aransas and my kids were swimming and I said, life doesn't get better than this. And I said, I raise my hand in grace, pray for the ones I wish I could erase. Yes. We are who we are and we'll be who we'll be. You know, I want it. And I remember, I, this is kind of cheesy, but I, I, that was my first tear of happiness that I shed after sobriety, going, I get it, wow. And that was, that, was, that was really hardcore. And then I showed it to the band and they were like, dude, Jeremy came up with that driving beat. Matt came up with those, just the drive of, of the bass behind it. Ryan comes up with all the strings. And next thing you know, we had this just magical piece that, that people now listen to when they go work out, you know? And I'm like, that's yeah. awesome. That's awesome. Instead of making people sad, we're 
we're shedding pounds with them. Yeah, absolutely you, know? you are. I mean, and it's one of those songs, it's so uplifting right. and powerful and the way that everybody, everybody's contribution to the song is absolutely beautiful. I want to ask you about this too, because you know, the, some of the things that you went through as a band over the years, so unique that you were signed to Universal twice. <laughs> oh, I mean, it was God. crazy when they dropped you. And you know, of course you had a great run with them, but what's really amazing is that you started your own company, your own label, right? And you had this incredible hit with "Oh My My," right? About a year ago, uh, and it was what? And what? Not only what a great song, but it just seeing that happen and you guys doing it all yourselves was was such a beautiful moment. Talk right. to me about that. Um, I learned a lot from from these guys. I learned a lot from the people at Universal, Sylvia Rohn, Avery Lippman. I, I learned so much from those people and what it takes and the drive that it takes. So when when we started the record label, I knew that I had to hire my radio promotions team. I knew I had to hire the same people that I had with Universal, but we had to do it, you know, and we had yeah. to put in the legwork. We just had to write good songs. And then I was like, well, dang, let's do it. So we got to work, you know, we, we wrote uh, so many songs, but this one in particular was really cool because uh, uh, Eric, my, my right hand guy, right hand man and I were working on all these songs and this one came out and I remember dropping my my 13-year-old daughter off at school and going, oh, God, you're in middle school now. And all these boys looked at her, you know? And I remember thinking how cool middle school was, you know, and how, like, I would listen to New Order on the way to middle school and think, like, how does it feel to treat me like you do? And I'm walking and thinking I'm like Ducky from a Pretty in Pink, you know? And, and it just, that nostalgia came back. So I thought, I'm gonna write a song about that nostalgia, that romantic nostalgia of like a 13 and 14 year old boy yeah. meeting each other for the first time. And, um, and that's where I just came up, like, you wear black hair, I have blue, but it's a, oh my, my. And it's just a tongue in cheek kind of song, but it's groovy and it reminds me of like Blur meets, you know, uh, I don't know, Blur, yeah. <laughs> you know? It's, it's a great song. And it's, it's, it's cool you, you mentioned that, because let's face it, you guys are all hopeless romantics. We all are, yeah. right? I mean, that's yeah. one of the things that's great. So being able to tap into that, yeah. that feeling of your youth, but see it through your children's eyes as well yeah. is pretty amazing. Yeah, that's you some know? fun stuff. Yeah, yeah, it's amazing. But, I, I, you know, I love this song, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have you guys play it right now. It's such a great tune. Thank you, buddy. I appreciate it. This is called Oh My My. God. Hey, Will, this has no bit. <laughs> Here we go, boys.
looks nice. Let me tune up here real quick. Just a normal boy that sank when I fell overboard and My ship would leave the country But I'd rather swim ashore Without a life as I'd be stuck again Wish I was much more masculine Maybe then I could learn to swim Fourteen miles away Now floating up and down I spin colliding into sound Whales beneath me diving down Sinking to the bottom of my head Everything that freaks me out The lighthouse gleam has just gone out I'm cold as cold as cold can be of her, the one I love My will to quickly end it all Set front row and my need to fall To the ocean, end it all 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 great track second single from foiled right there into the ocean and you know i'll never forget the night that i got to introduce that is the number one uh, song on the vh1 top 20 countdown i was really excited about it and to get to tell you that yeah I, i'll never forget that either because that to us was the day that we all thought that we made it in the music industry because you 
mentioned our name. <laughs> not, not only was it number one, but it was, it was um, Mr. Matt Penfield saying Blue October and, and saying our names. That was it. We were like, that's it. It was even better than we getting win. our platinum like, plaques. We were like, we're good. good. I think now. let's let's go uh, have pancakes or something, you know. <laughs> so uh, it was amazing for us, and and we will always remember that moment. Yeah, it was it was great for me too because it was such a fan of the album. So when it oh, got to man. number one, I was that made me unbelievably happy. And Thanks. let's talk about the song "Into the Ocean" because okay. you know it was definitely upbeat, but the subject matter was real and it was raw and it was dark. Um, and let's talk about. It's. I mean, suicide is one of the subject things that you talk about in there that you allude to. And I want to ask you about not only when you wrote the song, where you were at at that period of time, okay. um, emotionally, um, but just the whole process. Um, I was uh, in L.A. when I wrote uh, that's the whole album, uh, kind of in a studio by myself. And I had, uh, I've always dealt with depression, you know, and... Uh, always been on Paxil since I was 14, and I always wrote about things that were darker of, of nature, and I just, you know, I, I loved it. But but it, it got a little real when, when I was in L.A. I um, was doing too much self-medication, and anything was available and everything, and you know how that is. As, oh, yes. As, uh, it's crazy. As an addict, I was, I was uh, enjoying the buffet, let's just say that. And so it didn't help with the depression. So when I wrote this song, it was me really seeing for the first time that, wow, now I know what addiction can really do. Because before it was like, okay, I'm playing, I'm an artist. I'm, I want to be like Jean-Michel Basquiat. I want to be like Andy Warhol. I want to be all these yeah. people that could, they, they, they experimented. Why can't I? But I just couldn't stop. I couldn't stop. And that was my first taste of, wow, this is a dark, dark world. And um, this gets ugly. So I remember writing that song and I remember the word play and I remember loving I'm a fan of words and uh, fitting consonants into uh, and syllables and into the right spaces and making them sound beautiful. And I remember thinking, I'm just a normal boy. I sank when I fell overboard. My ship would leave the country. Wow, now he's got to swim back to shore. Yeah. And just the metaphor of how that felt like where I was at the moment. So when we finished it, I remember sending it to Avery Lippman at Universal, and he goes, what in the world is this? And I love it. This is going to be a single. And I was like, wait, a song about suicide is going to be a single? Because our first song, Hate Me, was pretty raw, too. Yeah. And then I sat back and I thought, this is, this is pretty amazing that I get to sing what's actually on my heart, and they get to become the singles. Yeah. That not every band gets the opportunity to sing from the heart. And, um, and, and we did, and we got to write from the heart, too. And that was really special, and I'll always be very grateful that those two songs are the ones that got us our platinum record yeah. and our attention from you. <laughs> yeah, well, it was amazing, and, and what a great record it was. Thank you. And, uh, you know, I mean, so many things have changed since then, which I think is, is a beautiful thing, right? I mean, you, you've gone through getting clean and sober, you know? I, I shared that with you. I'm just over a year. Uh, Congratulations, now. by Thank the way. So Congratulations. Much. It feels so much better to be uh, completely present and with yeah. clarity. And it's a beautiful thing. And it just makes sense that you and I are together doing this. It and really does. guys, because yeah. I love being with you. You know, it, yeah, it's just being a fan all this time and loving your songwriting. And here we are, both living the same way, living a good quality of life, you know, which is incredible. Which takes me to the next song, because yeah. it's... That, I mean, that's really what this song is all about. So let's talk about that. Uh, this song was the moment that um, I realized that recovery did work because I, um, the, the first line, I'll smile if I want to and I'm not afraid I'm going to flaunt it too. You know, it, it, it showed me that love does exist. Um, it showed me that family does matter. And it's such a beautiful thing to watch your kids grow up and to watch your wife who really loves you, uh, be such a be such a badass for you, you know, and such a supporter. And um, so I wanted to honor them. And this song just came out so quick, man. It came out so quick. It's like like one of those things that just pop. And it was the first time a song came out so quick about joy and about love and and faith and and uh, friendship. So. Yeah. I'd love to play it for you. Yeah, it's fantastic. It's a title right. track from home. Let's yeah. hear it right now. Thanks, buddy. It'd be great. 
I'll smile if I want to I'm not afraid, gonna flaunt it too What a glow in your living true Yeah I'm living for the right now I had a few friends show me how I take a deep breath and blow it out I let it go Listen, I can't wait To see what's around that corner I can't wait to soar Cause baby, I lie awake I watch you sleep and thinking It's the little things that make a home Dancing in the kitchen in the pale moonlight Only care in the world, our kids are alright Daddy loves mama, mama loves him Tomorrow we get to do it over again Smile, let me baby take my breath away With the good Lord willing I'll be happy to say Daddy loves mama, mama loves him Tomorrow we get to do it over again Gonna win. I'm as proud as I've ever been. Cause I'm surrounded with some good friends. Yeah, good friends, good friends. Uh huh. I'm forever like a tattoo. I stay sticky cause I gotta be the glue for my girl, my friends, my home, family. I do it all truly. I can't wait to see what's around that corner. I Been thinking it's the little things that make a home, yeah. Cause we'll be dancing in the kitchen in the pale moonlight, only care in the world. Our kids are alright. Daddy loves mama and mama loves him. Tomorrow we get to do it over again. Smile, let me, baby, take my breath away. With the good Lord willing, I'll be happy to say, Daddy loves mama, baby, mama loves him. Tomorrow we get to do it over again. We found our home Something we can build for years From the young and old Yeah, I'll be there to wipe your tears We all get to see who we grow up to be We aim for it all We lift up these walls To make this house Oh, 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 oh. Only care in the world is that our kids are alright Daddy loves mama and mama loves him Tomorrow we get to do it over again Smile at me baby, take my breath away With the good Lord willing, I'll be happy to say Daddy loves mama and mama loves him Tomorrow we get to do it over again Dancing in the kitchen in the pale moonlight Only care in the world that our kids are alright Daddy loves mama and mama loves him Tomorrow we get to do it over again Smile at me baby, take my breath away With the good Lord willing, I'll be happy to say That daddy loves mama and mama loves him Tomorrow we get to do it over again That was nice. I close my eyes and I smile Knowing that everything is alright To the core, so close that door Is this happening? My breath is 
kiss on your hair And I'm unaware that you open the blinds And let the city in God, she held my hand And we stand just taking in everything Start. My arms are up and wide Your head is on my stomach We're trying so hard not to fall asleep Here we are On this 18th floor balcony We're both flying Moms and dads, family past, just getting to know where we came from. Our hearts were on display for all of you to see. I can't believe this is happening to me. And I raise my hand as if to show you that I was yours. I was so yours for the taking. I was so yours for the taking And that's when I felt the wind pick up I grabbed the rail while choking up These words to say And then she kissed me Boom oh. I knew it from the start My arms are up and wide Her head is on my stomach And we're trying so hard not to fall asleep Here we are 18th floor balcony We're both Flying away And I'll try to sleep To keep you In my dreams Till I can bring you Home with me I'll try to sleep and when I do, I'll keep you in my dreams. Come on, Ryan. This next song, this was written because uh, it was someone's birthday. <laughs> I was broke. We were all broke back then. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, it was her birthday, and uh, I remember we lived together, and 
she went to bed that night, Ryan, and it, it, I knew when she woke up it was gonna be her birthday and I didn't get her nothing. Right. So I was like, oh my gosh. So I said, you know what? I'm gonna stay up all night long and I'm gonna write her a song, you know? So I did. And I'm sure I'm glad I forgot her birthday that year because this song would <laughs> never have been written. <laughs> Here we go, boys. <laughs> Something that I can't quite explain I'm so in love with you You never take that away And if I said it a hundred times before And more, you never take that away. You'll expect me to be calling you to see if you're okay when I'm not around. Asking, Do you love me? I love the way you make it sound. I'm calling you to see, Do I try too hard to make you smile? To make us smile I will keep calling you to see If you're sleeping or you're dreaming If you're dreaming or you're dreaming of me I can't believe you actually Thought that the world had lost its way It's so hard sometimes Then I fell in love with you Then came you Yeah, and you took that away It's not so difficult The, the world, world is not so difficult You take away the old You show me the new I feel like I can fly when I stand next to you so while I'm on this phone, a hundred miles from home, I'll take the words you gave and I'll send them back to you. I only want to see that you're okay when I'm not around. Asking, do you love me, baby? I love the way you make it sound. Calling you to see, do I try too hard to make you smile? Keep calling you to see If you're sleeping or you're dreaming If you're dreaming or you're dreaming of me I can't believe you actually picked me Mr. Will Knack, come on baby
What a great song. And to think that was the song that really, that's how I discovered you guys. And I'm sure a lot of uh, your fans early on discovered you through that great song. I immediately yeah. related to the elation of it. The thing that's amazing, too, I, I love to watch you and Ryan perform that together and share that vocal. Yeah. And the mandolin part is just, it just sounds so cool. It's, it's, it's really great. It just it, had so much feeling and texture to it. It's crazy playing with such amazing musicians. Sometimes I got to pinch myself because not all bands, you know, have these guys in it. And, I, and I'm, yeah. a, I'm a blessed, lucky man. Uh, d- because you can you can ask them to do anything and they'll do it and so it's it's amazing. They're so talented, all of them. Yeah, I mean you guys are great. I mean Will adds all that, all that sound and you know uh, as uh, you know texture and the different things. It's like he the does. sadness There's... came out of Will on that last one. I'm just like ah, <laughs> yeah. you know. Yeah, you know. Oh gosh. Hey, real quick, I remember when we played that song at the showcase that you you came out to. And I, yeah. I think if I remember right, it might have been either at the Mercury Lounge or Hell's, someplace in Hell's Kitchen. It was Hell's Kitchen. Yeah. It was that cra- crazy, it was all spot. the way in the back of the Oh, room. I remember that. And night. I remember like after our show going backstage and being like, uh, guys, Matt Penfield was out there. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Because I, you know, I was excited to be there. You I were there. Was Avery awesome. Lippman was there. Monty yeah. Lippman was there. It was crazy. Yeah, it was a cool night. It really it was, was. It was a great night. And you guys blew me away. I was like, wow, this, this is the real deal. Which I, you know, that, that was a thing. Because it was really, the performance was so emotional. You really, it was emotive and passionate, which is a thing that I think that it really attracts Fans like myself and other people that are watching right now that love the band. Right. You know, and when you wrote Calling You, yeah. all right, I mean, that was such a great story that you wrote it. I mean, that's one of the most romantic stories ever, that you write a song for someone be, as a gift because you don't have money. And, and there's nothing better than that's the greatest gift is the song. Yeah, but you still you. heard how I threw how sad I was in right. it. Yes. And how desperate <laughs> I was. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. There's so I was like, de- geez, Jess, can't you just write a song that says happy birthday? No. I mean, there's the desperation <laughs> you hear in that, yeah. in the lyrics, you know, and, and also the uncertainty. And there's a little bit of that self doubt that kind of goes along with. The insecurity in a relationship, was, yeah. right? Yeah. So, so talk to me about it. Is that where you were? That, that, yeah, that's where I was. We, you know, and that that was such a that was such a a, a good friend. Her name was Mamie, and, and she was such a good friend and was such a good person. And um, but it, but that song, you know, it she deserved a lot more than that song because it still came back around to hell how I needed to hear her on the phone, that everything was okay. Like, come on, Jess, you know? But but it was true, because we were just starting to tour. We were just starting to be away from home for the first time, like like crazy be home, be away from home. You know, we were homesick kids and and um, and uh, partying a lot. And so yeah. our, our guilt trips were were stacking up on our shoulders. And so that had a lot to do with that. Why did you look at me? Because, <laughs> I just look that way just for a little support. Like, it's always nah, man, fault. you know, because yeah. when you're when you're a young kid, you do stuff and you know you feel bad about it, and and so that had a lot to do with that song, also. You know, it's calling you to make sure everything's okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like I was always the Did one. Did you hear anything from home. Oklahoma? Oh, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> right. exactly. Oh, she didn't. She's cool. <laughs> That's amazing. I love that. You know, let's talk also about the song we heard before that. The closing song, Unfoiled, yeah. is 18th Floor Balcony, which is uh, when, I, when I first heard that. I, and how it really starts with, I mean, your voice when, you, when you're, I mean, it's, that melody comes out of just, it feels so stark. Yeah. But it's, it's so talk to me about that one. You wrote that I wrote with that your old guitarist. With right? our old guitarist, C.B. Hudson. Uh, amazingly talented man. I love him to death. Uh, he was just playing pick during the calling you days, just picking this this uh, chord progression. And I walked in, and um, I had just met this young lady. And I, you know, when you meet someone for the first time, you're like all smitten, and everything is colors and rainbows and unicorn farts, you know. And uh, yeah. and uh, and I the words just came out. And I think we wrote it in like 30 minutes, isn't that right? When we, we were in the dressing room, we were in the dressing room in right. Dallas while we were rehearsing, and um, we wrote it literally in 30 minutes, and it was done. And it's just, it needed to come out. Like once again, it's just a, a balloon and when it's ready, it pops yeah. and it's, it's done. Yeah. Some songs take 30 minutes, some songs take two years. Yeah, and yeah. then just to get, uh, it, it's really interesting how that process is. Now the next song that we're gonna hear is something we need to talk about because it's, uh, it's from the Sway album. And yeah. it's a great track called Bleed Out. 
And, you know, it's really about making amends. There's, there's that in there. And, you know, uh, and, and because you and I have both been through so much, you know, and going through getting clean and sober and, and changing our lifestyles. There's, and there's a process this, to it. Yeah. Talk there's to a me. process to, to staying sober and doing it for the right reasons. Um, recovery is recovery, but staying sober and living right. Um, I'm smarter now today because of the things I've learned through recovery. Uh, there's a part where you have to go tell people that you're sorry uh, for the things that you did. And um, in the wake of addiction and alcoholism, uh, there's some bridges that I didn't just burn, I blew them to pieces. And and one of them was was with my wife. And, and I didn't want to just say, I'm sorry. Um, so I had to write a song. And I thought that if I wrote a song where I tried to envision what it must have been like to live with me during that time period. You know, and what, so I wanted to write it in her eyes, what she was seeing, so I could at least start from there to show her that I understand and I'm trying to grasp what I've done to you before I even make an amends. So this is before the amends. This is me showing her that I'm tapping into that knowledge of what you had to live with so I can open that door to saying I'm sorry. It's such a great song. Thank you. This it's is called cool. Bleed Out. Close my eyes, feel your sigh. A desperate aching wonder. Will you ever, ever let me off my knees? I'm wide awake like a dream. As simple as a secret being told Told to everyone but me Well, I bleed out I gave it all, but you can't stop taking from me Way down, I know You know how to cut me with your eyes closed Bleed out it won't be long till the heart stops beating. Don't let me bleed out here alone. The sudden rain is coming down. It all comes back to me. Waking up, falling down. Another day comes undone. And I keep trying to heal your pain In return you cut me over and over And I will bleed out I gave it all you can't stop taking from me Way down, I know You know how to cut me with your eyes closed Bleed out it won't be long till the heart stops beating Don't let me bleed out here alone Listen I finally feel like I'm supposed to be here Don't you take this moment away from me But before you kill me, won't you Won't you look back in my eyes Watch me bleed out I gave it all you can't stop taking from me Way down, I know Bleed out It won't be long till the heart stops beating Don't let me bleed out here alone Will you hear my plea? Will you hear my
we don't touch
was great. What a great song from This Is What I Live For, the latest album. The Weatherman. And, you know, I love the fact that you and Matt wrote this together. Oh, yeah. There's a great ah. story, right? I mean, what part of the country were you in when you wrote this song? Matt? Uh, we were in Asheville, North Carolina, actually. It That's was, right. Uh, yeah. It was kind of a crack hotel. Not kind of. It was, it was definitely a hotel. an pay-by-the-hour hotel. And yeah. um, But it was right in the middle of everything, so I told our tour manager, get that hotel because we want to be in the middle of everything. And Matt... <laughs> called me and said, man, I got these songs, uh, uh, let's write. And so I showed up at the, the hotel room and go ahead, Matt, you tell it. You yeah, well, we we're actually going to get together and work on something else, but, um, I'd been kind of feeling, really feeling that chorus and I just showed him the chorus and not knowing, you know, if he was going to love it or not, but he just took to it right away. And that was another one of those songs that I think came, I mean, maybe two hours. Max, you yeah. know, the whole thing. It wasn't a situation, too, where the weather was really bad at oh, the man, time, Oh, man, it right? was gray, it was cold, it was rainy, and it was perfect. I just opened the door, was, you know, had a couple cigarettes and a cup of coffee, and it, it, it made me feel like if there was a time that's nostalgic for writers, that was it. Yeah. And you yeah. shouldn't waste it. Don't go shopping, don't go, just sit there, and let's dive into each other's minds. And it's a really personal song. And I remember asking him after I heard that chorus, how personal do you want to go with it? And he goes, man, I, this means a lot to me. This is me trying to reach out and say, I want to work on this. I want to work mm -hmm. on this relationship. And um, so we went really personal with it. And it's by far one of the most memorable moments that I've ever had with Matt Noveski. Yeah. Uh, and we've known each other for over 20 years. So it's one of the most memorable moments. Uh, besides smoking cigarettes in the front seat of the van while everybody was asleep on the way yeah, to Traverse City, yeah, yeah. <laughs> listening to Blur and the Pixies, you know, yeah. So, but it was it was it was amazing to be able to help him get that out. Yeah, yeah. Was it cathartic for you, Matt? When it was very, it was very cathartic. I mean, Justin gut checks you constantly when you're working together, and he's probably the only person that ever does that to me like that. You know, so when I'm working on lyrics with him, I'm like, well, what if we, and he's like, no, 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 say what you mean to say. Yeah. You know, and, and I love that. Yeah, to go with the yeah. first thing, right, that you're thinking of, because it's usually what's really on your mind. Yeah, don't, don't try to be clever, just say it, just yeah. get it out. That's, That's the great. main thing I think that we've learned as writers is the, yeah. the less clever you try to sound, the, the better. If yeah. like, we, I grew up on like Morrissey and he would, Young bones groan and the rocks below say, throw your little body down because I'm going to meet the one I love. Like, what? Yeah. Like, but he wouldn't say, the, the, the rocks were golden brown and I'm going to fly <laughs> through the... No, he just says, dude, you're going to jump? Jump. Yeah. You know, and... Shakespeare's sister, right? You're yeah, talking. baby. Yeah, that's yeah. it. Yeah, right? And I could, I mean, yeah. I, could, I could quote that man forever, but that is something precious. First line... I was just like, why don't we just say we don't touch anymore? Yeah. Like, bam. And yeah. he, uh, okay. And then we just went, and then he came up with the black, red rose left in the parking lot. Yeah. Like, what a visual. I sit yeah. here choking on words I should have never thought. I know I just tore you down, and my words will come back around just like that honeymoon I promised you, but you never got. Like, what? Yeah. Br br beautiful lyrics, brilliant lyrics. It's too. what a memory I have with him on that. Yeah, and uh, we'll probably go back to that hotel and just sit there, maybe make we'll out a little bit. Room. Yeah, you know. Yeah, Asheville. Yeah. North Carolina. <laughs> <laughs> right? Amazing. That's a, such a great story. Now I gotta say that we're gonna uh, we're gonna go on to another song from Foiled, and you know this reminds me of our relationship too, and you know being a big fan and supporter of the band f from early on. Uh, but we went through a lot of different things together, and we we were there for each other, Justin. Like you know, yeah, when... that was so cool. That like it wasn't you weren't just the guy on TV anymore. You were. I remember calling you after I found out that I was going to be leaving my first wife and going away from my kid, and leaving her in Nebraska. And I had to make a big decision. I wasn't going to be able to see my kid for a while, and but I knew it was the right move. And I remember calling you just driving in the middle of the night, and you picked up the phone and and. I was saying some stupid stuff, and you were like, man, I love you. You're going to get through this. It's going to be fine. And um, you helped me that night, and I appreciate that. And you the same with me. Yeah. You know, uh, you returned the favor because I was going <laughs> through a really dark period, and, uh, and I was really down. 
Yeah. I was in a, in, a, in a depression, and I, I was certainly, you know, I was struggling through my addiction and alcoholism at that moment, and and I thought to call you because I knew you would understand me, but you'd also wouldn't judge me, and nah. and you love me as a friend. So it was, we were both there for each other in those moments, which I think is amazing, you know, and I think that's what, the that's thing that, so, that ties to find so, people that are amazing. It's a beautiful that's, thing. That's why it's so sweet right now. Sitting yeah. here, this feels like something that's meant to be and that that uh, that all of us are just so grateful to you for. So thank you. Yeah, I mean, I love it. I love the lifestyle that we're living right now, you know, which yeah. is one of one of being uh, sober <laughs> and present and clarity and therefore the people that we love yeah. and each other and friends. And, you know, it's, a, it's the best. And, uh, you know, you've definitely, as a band and as a lyricist, written a lot of soundtracks of things that I've gone through, and I know that many watching us right now have felt the same way. Yeah. And if, you know, getting back to the documentary would get back up and you see people, their testimonials about how you were speaking for the way they felt oh. with the lyrics, which is a, such a beautiful thing. So thank you. you know, I'm just, I'm just glad we can, we can, we can do this. Like, yeah. this is what we do for a living. Yeah. And it blows me away. It's amazing, isn't yeah. it? And it's so absolutely beautiful. I mean, this is a celebration of what, yeah. what we're doing right now. Yeah. It's a celebration of your music and of life. And it's it's beautiful. Yeah. So we're going to go back to this song that was so important to so many people and, yeah. and spoke about the way we felt. So thank you. This All is right. called Hate Me. <clears throat> Ready, boys? Block out thoughts of you so I don't lose my head. They crawl like a cockroach, leaving babies in my bed. Dropping little reels of tape to remind me that I'm alone. Playing movies in my head that make a porno feel like home. And there's a burning in my pride, a nervous bleeding in my brain. An ounce of peace is all I want for you. Will you never call again? And never say that you love me Just to put it in my face And never try to reach me It is I that want to Hate me today Hate me tomorrow Hate me so you can finally See what's good One accomplishment that you helped me with The one thing that always tore us apart It's the one thing I won't touch again In my sick way I wanna thank you For holding my head up late at night While I was busy waging wars on myself You were trying to stop the fight You never doubted my warped opinions On things like suicidal hate You made me compliment myself it was way too hard to take And so I'll drive so far away I never cross your mind And do whatever it takes in your heart To leave me
hate me today Hate me tomorrow Hate me for all the things I didn't do for you I never knew I was able to 
ever feel this strong Take me off your worry list It'll be better that way I'm doing fine Look, I've got plenty friends around Take me off your worry list Just throw it away While it's time to stand up On my own for her I'm packing it up And I'm coming I couldn't wait to finally pick my family up Everything was quiet Covered in snow There's something wrong here Why is there nobody at home? I'm back in the driver's seat And I'm heading back home Yeah, back to Texas But on my own Take me off your worry list It'll be better that way I'm doing fine, look I've got plenty friends around Take me off your worry list, just throw it away While well, it's time to stand up on my own for her I'm packing it up, and I'm coming today She is what my story's about I might have been gone, but I never walked out I'm packing it up Baby girl, I'm coming This is what your story's about My pretty little girl, can you figure it out? If it helps to know, so there is no doubt Listen to the stories, not everything is glorious Some hurt, some love, some shout I fought the world, but I lost that bout But you are what my whole life is about I might have been gone, but daddy would never From a pain in me A feeling I don't understand But it's holding me down So rain on me Underwater All I am Getting harder Heavy weight that I carry around Today I don't have to fall apart I don't have to be afraid I don't have to let the damage consume me Or my shadows see through me Cause fear and it's can reel you in and spit you out over and over again. Believe in yourself and you will walk. And now fear in itself will use you up and break you down like you were never enough. I used to fall, but now I get back up I'm up here, I'm looking at the way down there I'm staring through the I don't care And it's staring back at me Yeah, that's right but the beauty is I'm learning how to face my beast I'm starting now to find some peace And set myself free Yeah! Oh, today I don't have to fall apart 
I don't have to be afraid I don't have to let the damage consume me Or my shadows see through me Cause fear in itself can reel you in And spit you out over and over again Believe in yourself and you And now fear in itself It'll use you up And it'll break you down Like you were never enough I used to fall But now I get back on Sounded great, guys. It was amazing. Listening to Fear from the Sway album. What a great track that is. Thanks, buddy. Tell me about that, writing that song. That song was the first song I wrote sober. Wow. And I was pretty nervous, so I got my manager, Paul, to hook me up with one of my mentors, Blue Miller, the yeah. late, great Blue Miller. And, um, and I went to his house in Nashville and wrote the song. But I wrote the music to that during, during the crazy times. But I remember sending it to Paul and thinking... This is one of the most beautiful pieces of work I've ever written. And, um, and it was a mess. But I remember sitting with Blue Miller and um, his wife, and we worked on that song. And it was, it's the one thing that they kept telling me when I was getting sober is that if you're afraid of anything, it's going to keep you worrying. It's going to keep you in the paranoid state of mind. And you have to let go of that fear. And you have to clean your side of the street, right? Yeah. If you haven't lied to anyone today, right? Right. Then you have nothing to worry about. But if you start BSing people and if you start telling them the non-truth, you're always going to keep looking over your shoulder and you're going to stay in that scared spot in your life which won't allow you to move forward. Absolutely. So the beautiful thing about being free and sober and clean and happy and joyous and content is that you get to choose which path you take and you don't have to mess with fear anymore because you keep cleaning your side of the street. You know, and if you fall down, just get up and tell them, hey, I'm sorry, I don't, I don't know, that was my character defects. Yeah. Uh, I'll move on. But um, it was cool to be able to put that out and have it react so well to people. Um, and it's such a positive, uplifting song. I think that's probably my favorite song that I've ever written. Yeah, yeah, it's a great song. Thank you. And you're talking about that whole thing with rigorous honesty, which oh. is so important. <laughs> yeah, rigorous yeah. honesty. You rigorous know? is such a jagged word, isn't it? Does it does sound like rigorous. Yeah, it rigorous. It should be like a punk band. So it might actually be a punk band. Yeah. <laughs> if it isn't, Come someone on. will we should look it up. Right. Yes, exactly. <laughs> uh, before that, you did the uh, only track we're going to hear tonight from uh, 
Any Man in America, yeah, which was a definitely a difficult time that you were going through when you made that record. The song "The Worry List." Let's right. talk about that. Um, it's the one song that saved my life. Um, is is no matter how dark things got at my household or with the band, that's I always had the craft of going and writing what I was going through. And it's really true when people say get kids involved in writing and expressing themselves because it's a, it's truly a vessel to save their lives during depression or during things that that happen to you. And um, it my teachers taught it to me at HSPVA um, in Houston, and I'm glad they did because I was able to put all my fear and all my pain and um, sadness into song, and that really saved my life. And it was also a letter to my daughter. Um, just letting her know that I, that I love her. And that felt good to say, because at the time I wasn't allowed to talk to her. So That was that period where that you was were estranged. Yeah. That while. But what's crazy is, this is what's weird. I was complaining about how no one would let me see my daughter, right? Right. But meanwhile, a full-blown addict. So there was really a good thing going on, being kept away from her at that time, because I wasn't ready. Mm-hmm. I wasn't ready. So my higher power saw that, and he, I just needed to grow up before he let me be a daddy. And, and I'm able to do that now and, and, and uh, keep my side of the street clean. So it's a beautiful, just, just like this, it's a, beautiful, it's a beautiful life if you yeah. just see it that way. Absolutely, it's a beautiful yeah. life. And you have a great relationship with your daughter because of that now. Yeah. Yeah, she's 13, and uh, that scares me. Yeah. You know? And we talked about that, right? Oh, but it's gosh. So true. She's going to go oh off to gosh, school. Taking her to school, and she's going to be driving soon, and oh. boys. Yeah. Like that's crazy. I've already, I've already told two boys off on the phone. <laughs> like they're scared of me, and I'm gonna keep it that way. Yeah, that's that's a being a dad trying to. Trying I mean, to look do at it. the yeah. uncles back here. Do they look like they mess with anyone? Uh-huh. No. And let's talk about that because everybody's got a family now, and and let's talk about that, Ryan, because having you, you knowing Jeremy and and Justin for all these years, right? Let's talk about that relationship and. Brother from another mother, right? Yeah. You know, I uh, went to high school with uh, Justin. We met freshman year and and uh, kindred spirits, I think, from that point. I was in music. He was in theater. And um, I just gravitated towards him, you know. And, and, it's because um, of my dance moves, right? Yeah. Totally. Yeah. He was in love with Elvis. Isn't it great, though, to see you guys come up together through school and now have families and go have gone through all these uh, these these yeah. different things okay. together? Yeah, sure. You know, it's it's... We've all had our ups and downs, and, and the the um, the extracurricular activities have taken their toll on some relationships. And a bit blessed to have the ones we have now. And uh, two beautiful children uh, came out of it. I also married into two other beautiful adult children now, and and so um, it's we're just a big happy family. And you know, we still have problems like everybody else. And but I'm present today. Yeah, I'm aware. I know how to handle it. I still deal with my emotions, but I lean on my brothers and, and uh, my wife and kids. And, you know, it's amazing to look at my son and, and my daughter and, and I see myself in my son and I, I don't get all emotional, but I want to save him for all the crap that I went through, you know, yeah. uh, but you got to let them sort of do it. Just clear some of the brush out of the way. Yeah. And you, know? you got to let them make their own mistakes, <laughs> which yeah. is my That's problem. I mean. I'm like, yeah. you will not make mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> you won't. Yeah. I will take your phone away from you if you make yeah. another mistake. Which is amazing. That's the that's other side of that. it is, is <laughs> absolutely is seeing you know looking off stage when we're touring and and they're there. Yeah, and they get to see me here. I like Justin said, I had to grow up to be a father, and I can imagine being where I, the way I was and having kids now. I yeah, God, I'd be so scared. It's amazing. <laughs> now, well, tell me about coming into band as you did recently. You know, and uh, and now being a big part of this family. Talk to me about that. Because you you bring such a great texture to the band. Like some, a lot of the sounds that you you create fill such a, is such an amazing part. It just it adds to the, to the many layers of the music. And I think it's just a beautiful thing. So talk to me about joining the band and, and you know, and your brothers. The last four years have been amazing. The happiest I've ever been. Such amazing men. I just had a baby a year ago. She's 13 yeah. months. Uh, and what a blessing. Yeah, a little Nova star. Nova, yeah. yeah. What a great And name. what an amazing mother she has. Um, but these guys, you know, t- to raise a kid in this and, and stay sober in this. You know, I went, I've been on tour buses where I was a sober guy and uh, 
people are up till 4 a.m. doing what we all do. And, uh, you know, if, if you know what you're there to do, it, it's you can get through it and you're good in your program. But, man, to be around people that emphasize on that and live that way of life daily, it's like walking recovery, rolling recovery on a bus. And, uh, um, yeah, I mean, anything you, you want to do, like you step on a couple pedals, we're kind of talking about this backstage, and and people give you funny looks and in other situations. But as Jeremy likes to say, it's a vulgar display of pedals and sounds, and you know you can <laughs> yes. really find the emotion in in sonic uh, uh, with with a sonic palette and, and use the guitar and other instruments. But the guitar, in, in my case, as a, a sonic paintbrush to emphasize the emotions that Justin's singing about and writing about. It's a great way. So to put it. yeah, it's a great man, way. To put it. Yeah, couldn't be any blessed. You know, we all share a. A May birthday and sobriety. Yeah. That's yeah. That's, that's so right. Cool. Amazing. The fourth, fourth the eighth, May 8th, the tenth, the May tenth. Yeah. So may the that's fourth crazy. be with you. Yeah, yes, yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know what's crazy? Bringing you you up. Um, we were doing a song called "Love Stupid" on "This Is What I Live For," and I told him he goes, "What kind of thing?" And I go, "Okay, this is what I want you to play something that Jean Michel Basquiat would paint." Yeah. And he came back with this crazy thing that he did on. Garage band, and I and he said we can redo it. And I said no, we're gonna take that MP3 from Garage Band. We're gonna use it so he can think that way. I can be like, give me Jean Michel Basquiat, and he can do it. Right. Give me Andy Warhol, and he knows that that's more uh, more clear. You know, yeah. so it's he's an amazing guy, uh, most talented artist on the guitar that I've ever worked with my whole entire yeah. career. Yeah. So he's a genius, and I love him, and I love Nova, his little baby, and I yeah. can't wait to. To walk him through the fatherhood of, of being on the road, mm -hmm. you know? yeah. Justin. and telling him from <laughs> suck it up, Will, <laughs> suck it up. <laughs> Wait till you have eight kids. I yeah. mean, three. She ain't dating. Yeah, she ain't yeah. dating. <laughs> yeah, and Matt, you've, you've had a long term relationship. Obviously, been in the band for a while. So, talk to me about your brothers. And We're a giant family. You know, we really are because we we all like pretty much grew up together. You know, and now we all have. It's like he was saying earlier, I always think about that, like you look off stage, you think about like the home shows and the backstage and it went from what it used to be to almost being like a big daycare. Yeah. <laughs> and it's, it's the best feeling in the world. So I love true. it. You know, I have three kids and um, his daughter and my daughter are the same age. So they're like- Best friends. They're buds. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's awesome. It's a beautiful thing, one big family. My, my, big, my older daughter and his older daughter met at a show when they were both, uh, I think, uh, nine months old. I like have that nine, nine and six months, and they both met at a, at a show in New Braunfels, and they've been friends ever since. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah, yeah. since they were babies. Yeah, amazing. since they were babies. Yeah. Jeremy, one of the things that really uh, hit me in the film, yeah. Get Back Up, was just, I mean, everybody had so much emotion uh, with everything that you'd gone through, and how Justin came out triumphant and strong through that with sobriety. But it was one of the most beautiful moments in the film. I gotta be honest, uh, just uh, when you were just pour pouring your emotion out because of the love of your brother, you know? And, and uh, I know you're all brothers, but your, your blood brother, everything you've been through since you were ch you little, little kids, can we talk about that? Well, I mean, first of all, I mean, that's, that's your brother. You said it, you know, that's your blood, that's your, your family yeah so you know uh i mean just talking about that um back then you know it was crazy times i mean yeah. it, you've been there you've been through it and um it's crazy times like you don't know what's gonna happen next or like you know you do something right you do something wrong but it's all wrong it just all seems wrong the whole the whole trip down the road it's like almost like what if what have we been doing this for yeah you know so and we talked a little bit about this yesterday for Justin, when we all got together and uh, some of us were sober, some of us weren't sober even when we got together. And along with Justin's uh, beautiful wife and our parents, yeah, uh, we were just grateful that he, you know, there was either a yes or a no when we gave him that opportunity to be like, hey, we've got a spot for you. And we had some outside help from some other people in the program and we're worried about you. Yeah. So he said yes. 
And the greatest decision and was made. And guess what? Here we are right here. Yeah. And look so how handsome look who are. I am. You yeah. are. <laughs> and you look fantastic. Doesn't he look so... Oh, stop. Oh, yeah. stop. Oh, just look at me. I was hey, wait, let, let me Let me say this so he, so he can hear. Justin, you're beautiful. Oh, thanks. <laughs> look at Matt. He, he loves me daily. Be, look at him. How could you be? We have, you know, three... Com- Four completely sober guys in the band. I, I still take a sip every now and then, and that, that's okay. It doesn't get out of hand. But um, I mean, I'm just so proud of all of them, and yeah. they make they make our whole camp. I mean, we've even got guys in our camp who've become sober, and everybody, even the people who still have a sip every now and then, are better individuals because of what's going on over here. Yeah. And how how could you not be proud of that? Yeah. You got to be. It's just an amazing thing, and I've what I've seen you guys come awesome. through. That was good. That Jeremy. was absolutely beautiful, Jeremy. <laughs> well, now, you. which brings us to the next song, which I think got to say is yeah. just another song that's a real celebration. It's it's uh, you know it's about wishing the best, right? On, yeah. On people, even those who maybe not have done you the best. I mean, but, Look, but if, just wanting people just you know yeah, if, taking the high road. Really, if they can forgive me for the sh- I put them through. Yeah. I better start forgiving the people that I think hurt me so bad, you know? So yeah. this song is about forgiveness. This song is about being on this earth and wishing people well, because if you don't, you're just, you're just really selling yourself short to that freedom of just gratitude. So this song is for every person I've ever been in contact with, that I've had business with, that I've had relationships with. I wish you so well. I wish you only the best in the, that your dreams could ever imagine. And that's how I want to live. And that's how I want my kids to live, you know? And that's how I want you to live. And that's how I want Jeremy to live. So this song is called I Hope You're Happy. And uh, I love it. It's probably one of my favorites, yeah. It's a great song. And it's so, so upbeat and and uplifting. So I'm gonna let you guys get to it. Thank you, buddy. Sounds great. There will be days when you're falling down There will be days when you're inside out There will be days when you fall apart Someone else will break your heart They're never gonna hold you back I'm always gonna have your back So try to remember that I hope you're happy
That was so good, Jeremy. That was so good. <laughs> so good. So good. You guys ready? Yeah. This song goes out to every single one of you guys out there. I wish nothing but beautiful things for all of you. Oh, yeah. The man himself is getting ready, taking a sip of his nutritious Straight water. Gin. <laughs> Straight gin. Whew. <clears throat> Scotch. Papa knows what I'm talking about. There we go. <clears throat> they all said that I would never find a better one. Well, look at me, I did that. Well, come on now. Come on now You always said that I would end up alone Well, look at me, I'm on top of the world You were wrong now Yeah, you were wrong now You like it better when I'm falling apart It's easier for you to go and break my heart Come on now Yeah, come on now Oh, oh, well the best way to get back at you Live my life, be happy and true Come on now Yeah, I've been hurt but I'm moving on Taking that back and you'll be amazed Cause I only get better looking with age You like it better when I'm falling apart Easy up for you to go and break my heart Come on now, yeah, come on now Oh, oh, well the best way to get back at you Live my life, be happy, true Come on now Yeah, I've been hurt but I'm moving on great song thank you mr pinfield i love that track so much you know yeah i mean I, you know it's i mean it, it can it can mean so many things to so many people i mean for me it reminds me of a uh, relationships that have gone south right being hurt yeah and then realizing you know and somebody maybe doesn't wish you the best right uh not, not for any reason of your own but you know you got to move on and you got to just pull out that strength and start moving forward you we're know all, not looking back we're all going to meet those people in life yeah that are going to test your will, yeah. test your patience, test your sanity. Yeah. You know, they're going to make you think that you're less than. And man, this song is just for them. 
It's yeah. like a package of, check it out. This song's for you. Open it. Look yeah. how happy I am. Yeah, absolutely. You know, happiness is the best revenge, even though revenge isn't good. But happiness <laughs> yeah. is the best revenge, right? Yes, it is. It, absolutely. And you have to move forward. Yeah, you know? man. And it's a beautiful song for that. It's an empowering song. And I love that. Thank it's, you. Because it just feels so upbeat. It's, and it's a perfect song to end with. Today. And you, you have gotten better looking with age, wouldn't you say, guys? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, yeah. That, I mean, good, yeah that, so I guess handsome that, man. Handsome. That's a oh, handsome man. Well, thank you, guys. Yeah. You know, I, I can say you guys are... Oh, looking much more handsome than me, but I. But that's all right. Oh You're my supposed God. to be yeah. Well, it was an absolute honor yeah. to be here with you guys. I just want to tell you all that so much. It was, it was amazing. Thank you. you know what I mean, Thanks, thank man. you guys, Ryan, Will, Matt, Jeremy, and Justin. What an incredible experience this has been for me. Thank you for letting me be a part of this with you because this was an amazing event. And as a, as a fan of yours, guys, this was this was the. It doesn't get any better. Um, you know yeah. what I mean? Thank it was you, amazing. Yeah. Thank Such you. an intimate experience. So thanks so much, guys, for doing it. This Thank was incredible. You. Thank you very much. And I want to say to everybody, thanks so much for watching and joining us. We hope you've enjoyed Storytelling with Blue October. I'm your host, Matt Pinfield, and we'll see you again soon. Thanks for watching.